Okay. If you're running open source, you fix your problems yourself, or you open a ticket and you fix it by best effort basis, which means it doesn't get immediate support, or if you pay us some money, we will give you premium support. So there is also the option that some customers do, uh, like some of you here, is that you uh, investigate everything yourself, you fix it, and you let us know, oh, I found something interesting, can you please fix this in the next version, that mister over there. <laughs> uh, but most people who contact us uh, yeah, are uh, in need of help. But to start off, I'm Edgar, I'm the customer operations lead for support in EMEA, so we help all of our customers in Europe and some in the US if it's early. And um, we work from everything between helping people in, with the installations, with troubleshooting, uh, with advice, with attending meetups, and talking about how great we are. And the, my, my predecessors uh, mentioned it. Uh, so most people who contact us are like this. They are, or, they are on call or everything fails. And they open urgent tickets which vary from how cluster is broken to really big uh, piles of text explaining everything that is wrong and they supply us with all kinds of logs and they know what to do uh, but for those who are new to the product and don't know what to do I am not going to give a deep dive because that will take more time so I'm going to give a quick uh, presentation because I only have about 20 minutes and it is something that Bart uh, is waiting for for a month for yeah, 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 years correct, correct. Uh, and I'm finally doing this presentation so, uh, as you probably know, there are many reasons for an issue. So it could be anything. It could be air gap situations. It could be uh, user problems. It could be networking problems. No, we didn't change anything. We didn't do any firewall changes, but it doesn't work. And then after two days of troubleshooting, yes, but we, that shouldn't be it. And then they fix it and it's solved, amongst others. But there's out of memory issues, there's operator errors uh, consisting of anything, of ops teams being replaced just before a go-live, and, <laughs> and we all know about it, right? Uh, so, yeah, this is basically another version of my second uh, picture, is you come across people who are like this, or they're really sure of themselves. But the, the magic is to keep everyone happy. So normally we jump on calls with people, uh, we guide them through it, we hold their hands or not, uh, and they, they say by ways of screen sharing, uh, this is what the problem is, uh, can you help us, or this is what we found out, and can we work to fix this. So, uh, like I said, we have multiple solutions, there are actually three solutions, uh, we have the enterprise customers, they get everything. They get entitled support with SLAs and everything. They get a shared Slack channel in our secret own Mesosphere Slack. Uh, so we get to talk to you on a daily basis. Uh, sometimes you get a dedicated TAM. Some of our customers do that. And they have sort of a special a solutions architect who acts as a um, specific technologist who works for that company. They even get a laptop sometimes. And they get to log in and fix everything. So it's basically a person like us on-prem. And community customers have different options as well. They can open support tickets, they end up in our uh, like community queue, and they don't get immediate responses, but once we have the time, we pick those up and we help out. And then sometimes when you connect to the community Slack, uh, that's over, I have a, a thing, yeah, that doesn't work at chat.dcos.io, that's the public Slack, and sometimes people say, oh, that's bad, Mesosphere support is bad, and I didn't get a response, and then sometimes people say, oh, but did you get actual enterprise support? They say, no. Uh, so sometimes some of us go in there and they help people, and we work on the community tickets as well, um, and we talk to people at meetups. So that's sort of 
the options that people have. And there's also customers like uh, the German BMW. They do so much, they fix their own problems and they only open tickets when they have something that is really broken or they build something crazy amazing. Uh, so that's super great. They so, can actually see from the next one. Oh. Yeah. June 4th. Where is that? It's at PVH. Oh, interesting. You should all come. They're great. <laughs> um, so yeah, this can fail. So this is basically all of the components of our DCOS. And it has uh, open source and enterprise. So as you can see, the legend says here, okay, open source components and enterprise components so the yellow parts which get extra, we also have cockroach. Yeah. Where our, our IM runs on that. Um, but it can also fail on something else. Full disks, networking issues, database, crashes, uh, Cassandra, uh, nodes that break, uh, containers that fail, uh, you name it, anything can happen. Uh, and more. It, this is not the only thing, because customers run so many things in so many exotic combinations that you come across everything and, and like every day for me or every hour for me is different from the other. That's what makes it great. Um, so, in, in theory or in basic we offer a couple of facilities out of the box. We have logging facilities, that means we have a diagnostics bundle that some of you might know. Uh, that's the first thing we ask for. Can you create a diagnostic bundle? I'll show you in a bit in my mini demo if everything works. Um, what's inside? Basically, uh, there is uh, journal CDL content, so logs, there's D message content, there's networking stuff in there, there's Mesos master and agent information, so state, uh, resources, uh, any issues. Uh, so we check that and there is also a service bundle and the service bundle is something that has been created by our data services team and Imagine you run Cassandra and Cassandra breaks and in the past you needed to go through all of the sandboxes and pull all the sandbox locks all the standard out all the senders You had to go into the message agents and pull everything out and then you would be tired and you would think oh wait this, this is it and you fix it now you can run the service bundle which is basically a script which pulls a Docker image and you run it and it pulls all the logs and service definitions and it creates a tarball and you can send it to us or check it out yourself. Additionally, we have amongst others endpoints. So we have the regular DCOS UI, we have the Mesos endpoint which shows you everything that is going on in Mesos. Uh, we have the Marathon endpoint which Niels has shown you uh, from their environment, and we have the uh, exhibitor endpoint, which is the UI for Zookeeper, and all sorts of magic happens in there. Don't do anything in there. I'm just going to show you. Yeah. Uh, don't do any <laughs> stuff. I shouldn't have said that. Uh, and also, your favorite Linux tools, as you might know, time always must be in sync, or your cluster breaks. Uh, iOS tab top DF. Uh, this is supposed to be dmessage t but dmessage t is now also in the, in the diagnostic bundle, which is great, because you can immediately see if your disk is full or if you're running into ooms. Uh, and everything you might want, some people run Prometheus, some people run Splunk or other things to monitor everything, so uh, the, the possibilities are limited. Uh, so now it's demo time. Okay. I did create some small demos, and I'm not sure if it's interesting for everyone, uh, but they show a basic uh, way of navigating through the UIs, doing stuff via the CLI, and how to check basic stuff. And I'm thinking that most of you can do that, but for those who don't know DCOS, it might be interesting. So, I'm not going to type. I'm just going to copy paste. So, uh, here's one I made earlier, and it just runs Cassandra, it's a VCOS Enterprise 1.12.3 uh, with three masters, 
uh, six private nodes and one public node. And I can run as many nodes as, as I want for the demo, but I'm not going to do that because I'm going to do really simple stuff because this is not a deep dive. And so, so I have my demo system set up here. This basically means I'm going to create an app and I'm going to scale it. And it will show you that you're running out of resources, which means I don't have enough CPU or disk or memory or whatnot. So there are some funky JSONs that we created. Let me see. Okay, they're here. I'm going to roll out the app. And it tells Marathon to go ahead and run the app scaling application. So if everything works, it creates a deployment. And if I then check the services, I have it scaling. And it's running one CPU, 128 megs no disk and no GPU. So I'm now going to break it simply by scaling it to 100 instances. It takes a while. Because what it then do, uh, does, it will take a multi multiplication of the resources. And now you can see it's still deploying and as you might think, this should have been running already. And it's not because it broke. Because if I run a Marathon app list, so which basically means, tells Marathon, give me a list of apps that are there. It's taking longer because I'm using my phone for the internet. <laughs> uh, so as you can see, I have Cassandra running. Uh, which isn't waiting, and I have my app scaling, which is currently running 41 out of 100 tasks. The health isn't available, and it's currently scaling and waiting. What could be the problem? Well, we now have a funky debug <coughs> item in here, and as you can see, we can match roles and constraints, so it can run on any agent but it has issues with CPU. It doesn't have enough CPUs, so it's not going to do anything. So, like, when you design an app, you have to be sure that it can run on your environment. So, because DCOS is, sounds limitless, because it, it can run on anything, anywhere, it does mean that, that you have to make sure that your resources are limited. So, what we'll just do is we will scale it back to one. And then we'll send a message to the dev team saying, okay guys, you need to redesign because this isn't going to work. And in <coughs> real life that means other stuff and uh, Jira tickets and meetings and whatnot. So if we check it out now, by getting another list of running apps from Erica, We have two healthy apps, and because I didn't build in any health checks, it says NA. So it's now it's not no longer waiting. It has the memory. It's configured with with one task, and it's okay. So this is also easy to play around with for yourself because you can't break anything. You can just like if you have that cluster, play around and break it. So my second demo is vertical scaling and no matching resources. So what I'm now going to do is I, I'm going to scale the memory. This will also take some time. I've built in the, the, the slowness because I have 20 minutes and I'm afraid that I'm <laughs> finished early. There it is. It's created a deployment. Is it? So it's again scaling in the UI. It's deploying. What's it doing? Hmm. 
I don't even even have to do any fancy CLI things anymore. What I used to do, you have to you first you have to log into the PD agents and and do journal CDL things, and now the operator can easily see. Okay, it requires 97.7 gigs. I don't have that. <laughs> Back to the drawing board. So, wow. It means that like you can do anything, you can scale it back to 128. And then it'll be okay again. Or I can just throw it away. Would be funny if it still breaks. See it's now running with one task. So my third demo, how much time do I have left? Until you, you think it's you're ready. That's a yeah. silly answer. Uh, no. <laughs> Officially we're we are ending You only have a minute left. Well we're, no, we're, we're, we're <laughs> Officially we're at, we end at 9 30. Okay, so, so I'll uh, delete this one. And I'll go on to the next one. So now we have Cassandra back. So my third one is boom situations, and this happens a lot because sometimes you run Spark jobs or sometimes you run something else, and you think, oh, I have a big machine, I can give it a lot of memory, and then you'll have your uh, protection system kicking in, the Oom killer. And so what I'll do is I'll deploy a little Go app. Baked into a wonderful application, <laughs> which basically breaks memory every time. And as you can see, I have the app boom and it's recovering again because it's booming. And every time it's restarting and restarting and restarting. As you can see, we in, in like pre-112 versions, you have to log into the agent and then do a journal CDL or do a D message to ST and check out, oh, what's going on? I think it's booming. And now you can like easily see this, uh, which also means that you can like put uh, in endpoints and everything else for your monitoring. It's re really easy. And it just explains it, what is going on. Uh, the memory limits exceeded. Um, okay. um, what you can basically do, and that's what I, what I just said, is you can run a D message or a fancy grab combo of a D message. And funny enough, it's also in the bundle now. So if you now create a diagnostics bundle and you check the D message was in there, you can see that it's ooming and the occurrences and everything else in sort of a historic way, which is great for troubleshooting. So I'll throw it away because I don't want it to be me anymore. And my last actual demo is also really easy, and I think most of you can can figure it out. Is and don't say anything. I have. Can anyone see this? <laughs> Don't say anything, right? <laughs> it's a funny test. And then, Oops. what I'll do is I'll load okay. it out. Back to the UI, see if it runs because I'm. It's not coming. It's not coming up. What's going on? And it did create a deployment. You guys know? 
There's no image. I, I, I use the bogus image because then I was redeploying, redeploying, redeploying because I used a. So that, that way you can never run something that will start running and you have to figure out maybe you made a typo. Mm -hmm. you, can, you need to troubleshoot, but it just easily says it because it, it's basic dark. I use the I do not exist Docker image. <laughs> So, that was a silly joke. So, one of the important things is, and I'll go back to my presentation, to the matrix, is troubleshooting basics. That if you are going to take it, or you run to issues yourself, follow these steps, uh, or you go to support the Mesosphere and the rest, and there is a, uh, uh, a support page which shows you how to create a diagnostic bundle. If the diagnostic bundle does not work because services are dead um, or something else is failing, it has a wonderful uh, bash one liner. I'll show you in a bit. You can run that on any node, and then it basically does journal CDL and the message. So everything without the Mesos master and agent um, information. And the data services framework bundle is the second core. That's also made by us. And you can also check that out. Run it on your own system mm. and uh, see what happens. Oh. So I have a question about the diagnostic problem. Uh, I ran it on top of the open source uh, and all the secrets are basically there in the diagnostics bundle. Is that the same thing in the enterprise uh, version? Yeah, it, it sort of pulls your service definition. It yeah. doesn't do anything fancy because it, 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 it's a shell script and it, it pulls the Docker image and it just pulls everything from your cluster because it's for your own use. Uh, in, for in future versions, we might be including it in the diagnostics bundle with more fancy security and everything. But now we made this because there were a lot of customers with, for instance, cassandra issues. Yeah. And we needed something fast. Yeah. So we made this. So yeah, the reason why I'm asking is because yeah, it's told for having to support this ticket, we need to basically provide that and it's, it's checking its secrets. Yeah, and you need to sell Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But if I could you send me an email, we can like add that as a feature and pick it up. Um, so, let me show you what it looks like. You get in here. So you will always get the latest information. We have our support of mesosphere.com and you can create an account here. And we have a wonderful knowledge base and everything, but we also have this, basically the steps to create a diagnostic bundle. And if the bundle is not working, you can create this one-liner. And it's really non-destructive, it doesn't do anything scary. It just um, sorts it, creates a nice file. And for any unit with a prefix DCOS, and then it says saving logs for blah, blah, blah. <coughs> And it add, adds the message and then it creates a tarball. And then you'll basically have the same as the diagnostic bundle minus some useful stuff. And the data services framework that Ronaldo also just mentioned is located on our GitHub and because it's currently a uh, in development by us. So we're working on it. So if you go ahead and go to this location, you will always be sure to get the latest version from here. So we don't do uh, like bake the releases into GitHub and you can download the releases. You just pull the latest shell script and then you run the shell script with your package name and the name of the service. So prod Cassandra or what does Tenet do? TDP Cassandra and, and things like that. Uh, and then run it. And what it does, it, it, it takes all the information that you can use and that is useful, all the logs and everything else, and then puts it in a tarball as well, and there you have it. Magic. 
So, I think this is it. I would love to answer some questions, but I think everyone is ready for a drink. So, ask me during the drink. <coughs> or send me an email after the meetup. Uh, and thank you. Thank <laughs> you.